It's time again for Talking Trade, sponsored by MMAC's World Trade Association and Michael Best Strategies. Welcome to another session of Talking Trade. I'm Ken Waslick, Managing Director of EM Waslick & Associates, an international business development company. And I'm Sandy Siegel, President of ME Day. It's a pleasure today to introduce our guest, Brian Dranzik, the airport director for Milwaukee's Mitchell Airport. And I believe, Brian, you've been there serving in that role for the last seven years. Um, so thank you for joining us today. I'm excited to have you give us some updates. Great. Yeah, thank you for having me on. I appreciate being here. So I, I recently had the pleasure of meeting you, Brian, and, and being invited to an uh, information meeting at the airport where you and some of the project um, participants shared the upcoming expansion project and, and shared with the transportation community um, the, the goals and, you know, sort of the timeline and some of the details of that. And I'm, you know, as a transportation provider, very excited for, uh, for myself, for the community and so forth. So hoping you can share a little bit with us today um, what the project's all about and, and some of the goals and highlights on the services that we'll provide and, and you know, hopefully expand services here in the community. Sure, I'd love to. Um, you know, this is a, a interesting project that's taken quite some time to really come to fruition. We, um, when, when you think about the site that uh, this is going on, this is the former 440 site that the county took over um, close to 20 years ago now um, uh, when the when the base closure happened and we've always had big plans for this uh, for this site um, a number of years ago recognized some of the challenges that were going down just to the south of us in Chicago with regard to cargo and thought that this might be a, a really good opportunity to change uh, that location into into a cargo site. Um, it took a lot longer than we anticipated because it's a very uh, challenging um, industry to to um, uh, kind of break your way into. Really, there's just um, a lot of embedded um, activity in that in that space. But a couple of years ago, we we started this development project with Pro um, developers um, to really try to achieve that goal. And, and to to date, I think we're um, well on our way to groundbreaking, hopefully at the end of this year, where we'll be looking at about a 337,000 square foot facility with, with uh, about 400,000 square feet of ramp space that'll get um, uh, reconditioned to a uh, cargo facility that should be able to hold five um, 747 class aircraft um, on the ground at any given time. Uh, which hopefully will provide some uh, relief uh, for uh, uh, those that are moving cargo freight uh, from Wisconsin and Northern Illinois. So we're, we're pretty excited about where this project is compared to where we started. It's a really interesting uh, uh, 20 years is <laughs> a lot of persistence on your part in the uh, airport authority as well. But, you know, uh, we talked about our big gorilla to the South O'Hare, how confident are we that Milwaukee can attract the air carriers in the 747s into this facility sure. um, versus O'Hare on this one? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, you know, and it, it's it's been a challenge. Um, uh, originally, when we started this, um, I think you know it was it was a pretty uphill task. We, we were uh, talking to a lot of industry insiders and and told it was going to be a challenge, um, but you know, the events that have taken place over the past few years, including uh, some of the changes that that COVID uh, created within the industry, I think has has uh, really propelled the interest level on, on the Milwaukee project. We've done quite a bit to get messaging out about the project. Um, we, uh, uh, as Sandy had mentioned, we, we had some meetings in the Chicago area along uh, with uh, meetings here in Milwaukee and got a, a, a good high level of interest. We've been going to different trade conferences um, and have um, a, a lot of interest, I think, from domestic and international carriers. Um, I think it's just gonna come to the point where it's a, you know, uh, if you build it, they will come scenario, uh, hopefully. Uh, that's, you know, the track that we're on right now is that 
I think people want to see the shovels in the ground and the building uh, uh, erected and things of that nature so that uh, they, they see it as a real viable option. But I think the pressure points in Chicago are just getting to that point for either smaller operators or, or ones that have specific needs that we can address that hopefully will attract. Well, that's interesting that you have specific needs. You know, one of the advantages of O'Hare is it, it's a hub, right? A lot of yeah. international travel companies into there. It's the hub, uh, a hub for United and American, a lot of passenger traffic. So is the challenges uh, attracting the air carriers similar to on the air passenger uh, challenges that, you know, Milwaukee seemingly is always in the shadows of, of Chicago and O'Hare? Sure, uh, it's a, another great question. Uh, it, it's there's similarities and there's some differences. Uh, you know, we're looking at uh, passenger uh, traffic and things of that nature. We do have to and advertise Milwaukee as a city that stands on its own, which it does. You know, the the passenger and traffic level that we have here um, is um, very much the same as any in, any uh, city in our peer class, particularly in the Midwest, we, we probably lose about 2 million or so passengers to Chicago. We know that. Um, but at the same time, you know, we have sufficient traffic levels here. When you're talking about cargo, there's a little bit of a, you know, a difference um, in that so many carriers go through the major hub cities um, and it, it provides that network of coverage. So, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's getting the cargo carriers to understand that their risk is perhaps mitigated by the by the distance, right? So the distance that that draws passenger travelers to Chicago, which in some cases hurts us overall from a number standpoint, in this yeah. case possibly helps us on the cargo side that they can get uh, things in and out of here um, just as quickly, if not quicker, frankly, than they can in in the case of Chicago. So it's it's kind of a first mover thing, you know. Once we get one in the door, we feel confident that others yeah. will follow. It seems like you're really focusing on um, specialized uh, as opposed to be at a, a Memphis for FedEx or Louisville or Cincinnati, uh, actually attracting a segment uh, that is not, uh, how do I say, a viable a viable alternative to a major airport like O'Hare. Or sure, you know, that could very well be the starting point, you know, if it's something specialized like cold storage or or pharmaceuticals or things that have a, a, a time commitment uh, related to them. You know, that's, I think, where our advantage comes about. And from there, hopefully we can expand that and uh, uh, grow that that capability. Well, and am I right, Brian, that part of this um, project is addressing some of the runway and space limitations we've had in being able to facilitate some of the larger cargo planes? Yeah, it, it, you know, we've got the capacity now uh, with the runways and taxiway infrastructure that we have here at Mitchell. We're, we're very fortunate in, in the uh, sizing of, of the facility that we have. Um, what I think our advantage clearly is, is we, we've, we don't have the congested airspace like O'Hare. We take on 300 diversions a year from the Chicago airspace. So we have, we have carriers like Cargo Lux, uh, and, and others that are, are uh, here uh, when there's weather events or other issues in Chicago. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, we had Air, uh, an Air India flight that diverted here to Milwaukee that, that we you know, helped accommodate uh, and, and get back down to Chicago. So we, we we're accustomed to um, higher levels of traffic like that, which is great. So we can demonstrate that. Um, and I think that's also providing some relief to some of the carriers going, okay, these these guys can handle that capacity. That's great. That's good. Well, from, from someone who experiences daily the congestion in Chicago and the challenges we have, there is without a doubt, you know, a need for it and will provide a much greater service to all the cargo owners here in the Wisconsin area. And certainly it's it's a significant uh, role in attracting businesses to the community and, you know, being able to move cargo in and out um, with ease and without the, the delays, congestion and so forth in and out of O'Hare. So what can we as business leaders do 
to you know help provide the support and and what do you see as some of the obstacles or challenges that you know to get that support you need to you know um to sure. you know support um all the work that you're doing uh, that's i appreciate that i think that's a really good point you know it is getting uh businesses in the in the area committed to the the utilization of mitchell as an option um and getting behind that there's going to be a cost advantage. Uh, there's going to be a time savings advantage, we believe. And, you know, hopefully those are two really large drivers that get people interested in the in the possibility in and of itself. But, you know, Wisconsin has always, I think, been very supportive of its local businesses and local business community. And that's our advantage. You know, I think if we can take advantage of that from a business perspective and say, hey, let's keep that commerce uh, moving through the state and, and our state then benefits from that. Uh, that's the value add for for everyone here, I believe. Um, and you know, you you don't have that additional time travel down to Chicago, the delays that are going on. I think we can demonstrate that hopefully successfully, and that'll just increase the utilization. And hopefully, that makes everybody in the business community um, uh, more uh, satisfied with uh, with the option. Terrific. Well, again, I, everything, anything we can do to support it and, and sure. continue to get the word out and 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 check up with you on the updates as they progress. You're breaking ground this year, is that correct? Yeah, we hope to be breaking ground in November. Um, we have just a few final hurdles to clear. We one of our largest one was environmental that were passed, um, which is great. Um, and uh, now we just have a few final FAA um, hurdles, which we're, we're well on our way to achieving. So hopefully by this November, we'll be breaking ground and the project will make its way to completion by hopefully the first quarter of 2026. Very exciting. Well, thank you for sharing the updates and, and good luck on, on moving forward with everything. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. Brian Dranzik, for joining us today on Talking Trade. Thank Thanks, you so Brian. much. Thank Can't you. wait to get you on the show uh, in a year from now just to get the update. I'd love to do it. We'd love to show you the progress. Right. You've been listening to Talking Trade, sponsored by MMAC's World Trade Association and Michael Best Strategies. <laughs>